Okay, there we go. Okay, so today we are here Zooming with Mr. Jesse Lennox, and we're gonna get started with talking about this, um, what everybody's dealing with right now, this COVID-19. Um, how are you guys uh, doing over there, um, dealing with all of this craziness? Hey, well, thanks for having us on. Um, <laughs> first time, first time caller, long time listener. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're we're glad we're glad to be on and uh everybody's been doing good everybody's been staying healthy and um we've just been hanging around the ranch and focusing on three-year-olds because we got a big break uh with no shows um yeah. i know and this never happens because i feel like you're always showing like even if you're not at a big show you're at a weekend show getting your horses ready to go to one so it's probably weird for you to be home, isn't it? Yeah, it's been it's been definitely an adjustment um, uh, <laughs> for the uh, for the last ten years or so. I feel like we go weekend show or aged event, or I mean, we just try to be showing all the time. So uh, it's uh, it's been kind of a uh, uh, I guess I miss it. I miss showing all the time, but uh, it's been nice. Been uh, been nice to be relaxed and just uh focus on the three-year-olds yeah well so other than the three-year-olds have you taken up any like hobbies or anything like that you know <laughs> i don't know if i you know say hobbies like intense heated passions <laughs> yes i suppose i've pursued a few of those uh, <laughs> i guess really what i've been been trying to accomplish and and i don't want to toot my own horn um, but I think I have uh, really solidified myself as the Lloyd Cox of pony <laughs> cart driving um, on Facebook. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've seen it. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've seen it, Laura. I really think the probably what's coming to your mind uh, and what <laughs> came to my mind is it's like, really, the only way to explain my place is I'm like the if Lloyd Cox and Vin Diesel had a baby, <laughs> that would be me to pony cart driving. So, just uh, a little more edgy than Vin, maybe, maybe like Lloyd. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, um, well, I mean, and also kind of, I mean, it would go on uh, along with that because you've been doing some like stunts with them. I've seen. So you know, you've kind of done some flipping over the cart. And yeah. You know, and I want to I want to make sure everyone knows that I do do my own stunts. <laughs> uh, you know, I I just don't feel like it's authentic unless I uh, roll the cart myself. Yeah. Uh, but you know, kind of pertaining to that video, I I don't think people understand that that horse is twenty seven inches only, but it's a stallion. <laughs> it's like. You know, I don't want to compare myself and him to the scene from Dancing with the Wolves, uh, <laughs> oh but you know, it's very majestic, very yeah. similar. Yeah, very similar. Like kindred spirits, so it's fine. Yeah, we're kind of kindred spirits. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, so and really, you didn't show like the end of that, like what happened after the flying over the cart. I mean, and how did you catch the stallion after that? Well, you know, it was really, it's, it's like that <laughs> scene from the horse whisper where he's kneeling <laughs> in the pasture waiting for the stallion to come to him. Uh -huh. and, and, and that was my first approach. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I eventually just had to run up to him and catch him because he wouldn't stop. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I just, I feel like as a team, you know, he, yeah. I thought he was going to come check out, make sure I was okay. Um, but yeah. he did not. <laughs> he did not. Okay. Well, has, so has it gotten better since then? Have you have you gotten him pretty, pretty? Uh, I don't know. Trained up on the cart or no? We still I'm trained up. Well, I I feel like yeah. You know, um, we're we're starting to gain on him. Uh, we're we're still struggling going downhill. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that gets pretty rapid. Uh, but uh, but but he's been fun. He's been yeah. fun. Well, <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so other than pony training, uh, has there been anything else that you've had time for lately that you usually don't have time for that you've enjoyed? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, we, we, I guess just 
just hanging out at the house and Eric has been cooking more. Um, so that's been, that's been fun and, uh, you know, get, get more downtime to, um, Netflix and chill, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, so did, did you guys get in on the, on the, um, the tiger thing? Oh my goodness. I just went blank on the tiger. Oh, tiger yeah. King. Yes. Tiger uh, King. Thank you. We did, uh, very intensely get yeah. in on the tiger King, uh, because we thought for the first three seasons, it was a documentary on Lee Francois cutting horses. <laughs> We did not understand that that was not. Me. <laughs> I, just, I just assumed with the, <laughs> the guns. And just from like the opening scenes, you thought that it was. Well, that's what it was. It was just seemed like what East Texas would be like. Oh. So. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen, but uh, 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 it was it was really thrilling. Uh, mm -hmm. We we named a horse Carol Baskin. Did you? Um, yeah shortly after that so perfect well um what about what anything else what else have you been watching uh we've been watching binge watching survivor actually oh yeah mm -hmm. uh, yeah and so we we hadn't really watched it so there's lots of seasons of that uh yeah so many mm -hmm. yeah so many seasons oh my gosh well so um with all these hobbies that you have going on, are any of them like what you used to do in Canada when you were up there before you got into this crazy cutting horse world? Well, uh, I guess I guess kind of the 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 biggest drag is uh, I've been playing hockey on a couple teams in town, oh, um, yeah. and and they're all shut down. Okay. Um, I mean they've they've pretty much uh, they've pretty much shut everything down. Um, so yeah, we, we, we're just, uh, been at, been at home. Yeah. Just, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. so in Canada, then you, you played a lot of hockey and what else did you do growing up? Uh, played a lot of hockey, snowboarded a lot, um, yeah. as a kid. Um, and, uh, really, really loved that. And, uh, uh, those were, I guess, I guess my two biggest pastimes other than, uh, riding horses and uh, and trying to get uh, good at good at ro doing rollbacks I guess <laughs> <laughs> well so uh, what made you come into the US like tell us our, your your story um so I guess I guess it all started um, when I was uh, 10 years old mm -hmm. um, my uh, my first I got my first job was to clean stalls at the barn uh down the road um every saturday and uh and uh, my dad would drive me have to drive me over there obviously and then he'd have to undo he'd have to stay there all day while i worked and undo uh stall doors for me uh because <laughs> i wasn't big enough and it was an older style barn and uh so i just have really fond memories of doing that with him and you know looking back you know at the time I didn't realize um that it would have probably saved him a lot of time just to give me the 15 dollars and we just stay home uh, <laughs> but, you know being a good dad he'd take his uh day off on the weekend and and take me over there to clean stalls and um so that was really cool and and I guess that's when you know I first fell in love with horses mm -hmm. and uh so from there, um, uh, I got, that was at Brian and Cheryl Laws and they hooked me up with uh, a colt breaker named Stuart Harrower back there in Ontario. And uh, I'd say still to this day, he's the best colt breaker I've ever got to be around. Um, yeah. So when I was about 13 or 14, uh, he'd pay me five bucks a ride uh, to break uh, ponies in. And oh, okay. oh so, I mean, them. that's a long time thing then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this pony training. <laughs> as inexperienced as I looked on the Facebook, I've done a fair bit of it. Oh my gosh. Um, so, um, you know, so that was a really cool experience getting to work for him. And uh, he took 
really good care of me as a kid. The school bus would drop me off at his house and I'd uh, work my two colts. And then uh, my dad, he'd pick me up uh, or my mom would pick me up on their way home uh, from work. And then I'd go home, do homework and uh, go to bed and do it again. Um, so that was, that was kind of my first, that's when I decided I was going to be a horse trainer. Yeah. Well, and so then what, what pushed you into, into cutting? I mean, where did you see it first? Oh, so I saw it about the time I'm 10 years old. Uh, my uncle, uh, who lived way out West in Alberta, he's a dentist out there. He came for Christmas and he bought, uh, he, he had brought in the VHS of the Paterdy finals. Mm -hmm. And so that's the first time I uh, watched cutting. I think it was Kathy Dawn on Royal Fletch, actually. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, it was super cool. And uh, so I just decided that I love that. That looks so cool. Um, and uh, so while I was in high school, I all the way through high school, I'd break two colts a month and get my five dollars a ride and mm -hmm. uh until i got done with high school and then uh my uncle hooked me up with jerry hansma um paul and winston's brother that's still up there in canada and uh and i went out there to work for him at 18 and uh he uh he really took me under his wing and and taught me everything about cutting and um really well, I guess a lot of the foundation uh, of my horse training stems right from him um, mm -hmm. during that time. And, uh, and then uh, I was doing that and I'd gone, uh, I, when I turned about 19 uh, or so, I get uh, a job offer to work for Fred Miller, which was a non-pro there in Claire's home in the same town as Jerry. And uh, he offered me a job to train for him uh, out of his place. And uh, I could live in the motel room. Uh, he owned a motel in town. And uh, uh, Jerry had told me, you know, to be careful that, you know, not to do it. I was going to starve. I'm only 19. And uh, <laughs> he was 100% correct. I did. <laughs> I did start living in that motel room. And, uh, but uh, I had a lot of fun, and um, I guess that's when, you know, I got to show some, well, I worked for Jerry, and uh, so then about, uh, at about 20 years old, uh, Jenna Hunt uh, called me, actually, because Casey, she was working for Casey Green, and uh, she's Canadian, so I knew her when we were kids, mm -hmm. and uh, she said that Casey Green's looking for a two-year-old guy and uh would i want to uh move to texas and it was about that time that uh the managers of the motel had uh came to me and told me that the uh, bank was getting ready to take the motel oh. <laughs> so <laughs> so i was needing to uh make a change i guess so uh yeah i thought i'd i thought i'd come to texas for about six months and uh yeah and uh, uh, yeah I've been here 11 years now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still working on that six months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, so then, so you came to Texas and then how did you end up at, um, cause really like you got your, your biggest, I don't know, um, opportunity when you made it to Alice Walton's, correct? Oh, uh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I moved, I moved, uh, to America in October uh i think of 09 and uh i'm working for casey and uh we're working at gch and uh we we all uh lose our job there at gch oh sorry uh we all lose our job there at gch and uh casey tells me sorry man i uh um I'm not going to be able to uh, keep you, uh, but I'll help you find a job. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had worked for Alice back when he worked for Eddie. Mm -hmm. uh, so he called her for me and he called Tony Pickett was her horse trainer at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had just won the fraternity on Rock and W. And mm -hmm. uh, 
so he called up there for me and, and arranged a meeting. And uh, so I uh, got in my 93 Toyota Camry and uh, <laughs> had all my life packed into it. And I'd given everything I had up in Canada to come down to Texas. And I think we're three months into my job at GCH and there's no job anymore. So mm -hmm. I go, he gives me the address to Alice and I just drive over there. And uh, she cooked me some borscht stew and that she hunted herself and if you know Alice which I'm sure you do that's <laughs> very very her and, uh, her and I hit it off that night at dinner just fantastically and me and Tony hit it off and so I started uh, breaking colts for her mm -hmm. and I start the boon there and fortune Bend there in that first crop and I just remember I couldn't even believe the horsepower that's in Texas, of yeah. course, you know, when you're, uh, I think there were only seven breakers that year. And so when <laughs> two of seven are the Boone and Fortune Bend, uh, you're pretty spoiled. And uh, just being a kid from Canada that's just, you know, uh, broke whatever we got up there, it was, it, was, it was something else to get to feel those kind of horses in my first year. Um, and, uh, so we go three months at that job. So I've been in America, I think a total of five months or six months. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Tony decided to quit and, um, at Alice's and, uh, and that left, uh, just me there. Mm -hmm. Um, so now I'm just a kid from Canada. I've won $10,000 <laughs> and, uh, I've been a cutting horse trainer uh I think since I was 18 and I'm 20 now and uh and now Alice hired me as rocking W Ranch's uh head trainer and uh it was like a dream come true like words could not even describe you know I mm -hmm. as a kid I'd been obsessed with cutting horse chatter magazines you know, and uh, we had friends, Brian and Cheryl and Law, that had cutting horses. So they would give me their magazines each month um, of the last month's magazines. So I just, I mean, obsess over these magazines and Rock and W Ranch and Eddie Flynn on, you know, all those great horses. You know, I was so used to seeing, so I was so familiar with her program. Uh, when I got the job, I just, it was such a dream come true. And, uh, and she's, she was like a, you know, um, um, a mother to me. Uh, she, uh, she, she loved me unconditionally and <laughs> mess up or good, bad or indifferent. She, uh, she supported me 100%. And, uh, and for that, I could never thank her enough. Yeah. Well, and so, um, as you, so, I mean, obviously being a trainer for only a short amount of time or cutting horse trainer for only a short amount of time, like how did you um, develop your style? Because your style is unique. So how did you kind of develop it? Or was it like horses that kind of helped you develop it? Or what do you think? Oh, well, I, I'd say it's it, it was probably from having that job at Alice's, uh, the way the way it had kind of gone down uh, was she was trying to hire another trainer, uh, wasn't finding someone she fit with. And uh, I guess in the meantime, I'd asked her, um, she had a bunch of show horses there. And uh, I'd asked her if, uh, if I could, her and I could go to a weekend show while we're waiting on, you know, the next uh, trainer to come in. Yeah. And and there was uh, a mare there that was five years old, a dual ray mare that was afraid of cattle, and uh, she um, she had never been showed. But Eddie and Tony had trained her; they just hadn't showed her yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jerry Hansma, when I when I was a kid, did me a trick for horses that are afraid of cows. Uh, in the, in the, in a round pen, you just basically like get them over their fear of the cows in just a little breaking pen. And, uh, so I did that played with that, with that horse and me and Alice are planning to go to that weekend show. And I say to Alice, I say, do you mind if I 
take this do re uh, mm -hmm. And uh, she says, well, you know, I don't think it's worth the entry fee. And so I, I ask her, you know, please, I really think it'd be fun. And, uh, and so she agrees and we drive to this weekend show. And, and anyways, I wind up, it was at Teddy Johnson's and, uh, first time I get to show really in Texas and I win the cutting on that mare. Yeah. And, uh, so that was really what, uh, solidified her letting me train for her. Um, and then, you know, cause I didn't have the experience, her and I had a meeting and uh, our agreement was that if she was gonna let me train for her, she'd send the better ones to bigger time horse trainers. And mm -hmm. I could, um, she would get me lessons with whoever I wanted to learn from. Mm -hmm. uh, I could go ride with once a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just such an incredible opportunity to, you know, have a full group of two-year-olds, couple three-year-olds a couple non-pro show horses and just be able to haul them over i'd haul them to gary gonzalez also, bill hansen's lee francois uh, wherever uh and and learn uh mm -hmm. from those great trainers so i feel like that had a lot to do with it and then when i'm about a year and a half into alice's job i uh i get uh I have work visa problems and uh, I get sent back to Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when I get sent back to Canada, I'd saved up, uh, I think, I think it was $8,500 I'd saved up since I was 10 to now 21 or two, somewhere in there. And uh, I spend every dollar I've got left trying to, get work visas and and spend it all and finally i get on a sport visa and uh my job at alice's has gone you know um chris bates had gone there and um so gary gonzalez was kind enough to hire me and uh so i got uh i'd really say the turning point or the style development uh in my program today uh came from the year i worked for gary gonzalez when i got back um about 21 when I was 21. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I actually didn't know about that little, little, uh, go back to Canada and come back and all that. <laughs> yeah. I did never, never seen anybody as scared as me when I was, uh, <laughs> crossing the border, but, uh, the guy with the rubber glove was surprisingly gentle. <laughs> oh my goodness. I appreciated that, but, uh, it was, it was scary very scary and uh i was really really worried to ever get back and uh you know i'd kind of built all these dreams in my head that i wanted to accomplish so yeah well we're glad that you got back for sure <laughs> um so from your story you have always been one that um like i said earlier you like to go to weekend shows to get ready for the big shows and it's being it's kind of weird right now not being able to how are you keeping your um your show horse is ready. Uh, you know, just a lot of uh, uh, pasture riding right now. Just yeah. uh, exercise. You know, I think I think the main thing uh, that we're trying to focus on uh, right now is, you know, you spend, you know, especially on the four-year-olds. You know, they've basically been getting fit since they were two yeah. um, to to show. So. Uh, our main focus is really to to not let them get out of shape because you know they've it's it's been uh it's a slow build and it's uh it's a long build to get a horse strong enough for cutting uh we just want to make sure we don't have any injuries when they do let us go back um to showing so we're spending you know a lot of time riding them mm -hmm. um a lot of outside riding, you know, just so they can kind of relax because we were mid show season, you know, so um, it's kind of a, a nice opportunity and I want to make sure we take full advantage of it as, you know, a real mind refresher for our show horses that we, you know, don't usually have the luxury of giving them, you know, usually we're uh, at a show. So uh, as long as my, my main goal, I feel like they, you know are trained and are ready 
uh, two shows. So my main goal is, uh, is physical fitness right now. Yeah. Well, um, so we mentioned, you know, like the people who have kind of shaped you into the trainer that you are and your style and all of that. Are there any horses that you think through the years that have really shaped you into who you are at this point as a trainer and maybe a person too? I don't know. Oh, ab- absolutely. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I think, you know, it like, like some horses that there's, you know, a bunch of horses that have given me, you know, breaks at certain points in my career where, you know, I really think, you know, it, if I hadn't had that horse then and the opportunity to show that horse right then, I would have, you know, maybe never made it. Um, I'd say, you know, like talking about that dual ray mare that was afraid of cows was probably, you know, one of the most important ones. Uh, simply because it just put the idea in Alice's head, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think at that point in my career, it would have been very easy to spend another five years riding two-year-olds uh, and never having that break. And then um, uh, a mare called Rose Ray was my first horse I ever got to show at the paternity. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, she was a phenomenal big stopping horse and uh, made the limited finals on her and, and she really that that gave me a really good positive um, experience in the Will Rogers for the first time mm-hmm. and uh, I remember being you know so excited to show uh, you know there and uh, hear hear Tom announce my name and I mean it just highlight of my life it was just oh. an incredible an incredible moment and I just enjoyed it fully because I knew very well that you know that first time crossing the timeline might be the only time I ever do uh you know because at the beginning you don't know if your style's going to if customers are going to get behind it or not you know Mm -hmm. or if you know people are going to decide they want to pay you to do this sport um so you know that's always a big fear when you're you know kind of tossed everything to it and and um and decided to pursue it uh having never done it mm-hmm. you know it wasn't you know I, I didn't show any non-pro or any any other anything but open so you just kind of going in blind not really sure how the sport works just hoping it pans out and mm-hmm. uh it takes great horses like Rose Ray um to to make it pan out um so she was very exciting horse. Uh, then after I got deported and, and then was back at Double G's, there was a horse named Spoon River. Um, he was a spoonful gelding. He was super important to my career because uh, once again, you know, I'm a, uh, an assistant trainer at this point. Um, Gary Gonzalez, horse at the Bonanza. And, you know, I think about how hard it is to make an open finals now. And, you know, it was hard then. Uh, But when you're just a kid, you know, I've only showed a handful of times and I'm showing in the open and I got, you know, two go rounds. And if if we stub our toe, I'm, and then no one has come, you know, if you don't. Uh, And then that horse, he just pulled it right through and, and my first aged event in Texas, um, you know, I get to make the finals. Uh, it was, it was an incredible, another incredible moment. It really, then when I go, I actually wind up working for Alice a second time. Um, and, uh, and that horse making that finals is what made her decide to give me the job back. You know, once I got, um, everything sorted, uh, legally Mm -hmm. with my paperwork. Um, and so I think that's, that's a couple really big ones. Uh, then, uh, the next would be obviously Boone Sand Spoon. Um, mm-hmm. she, she was a challenging horse and, uh, and a incredibly loved to hold a cow horse. And, uh, I, maybe not the horse, maybe not a favorite horse or one that I thought would win a huge major aged event, but sure enough, um, she won the summer spectacular for me and when the stars 
a line they just do you can't mm -hmm. stop it and it you know it it um it was really exciting you know so that was a huge one um as far as style i guess when i when i started getting into some of the horses like boon sam baby you know i feel like i by the time i was training those i was two or three crops in you know and and so i was now just not just trying to get a horse to hold a cow now i was trying to get a whole horse to hold a cow different mm -hmm. you know and and so i guess you know when you're talking about style and stuff maybe that's when that starts popping up and that was a really great mare um for sure and then i can't close this uh question out without talking about my favorite horse of all time sink i'm hot mm -hmm. um, if uh if if i if i wake up after having a dream about cutting uh you know and and think about a horse uh that that's how i wish all if i could do anything i wanted with every horse uh they would all do that because that horse like i don't think i've ever had anything fit so well it was uh you know from uh uh, the first uh the first time i got to work her uh late in her two-year-old year uh till the last uh stop and turn i got the um world finals this year her last time working a cow it, it's she was so incredible just just life-changing a life-changing animal yeah yeah, she's she's pretty spectacular and so unique. And you're right. I mean, I feel like if there was a horse to fit you perfectly, she is definitely the one. So I agree with you on that wholeheartedly. Uh, you were a lot of fun to watch with her. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, and then so uh, I thought that I would close our little talk with um, so you and Erica recently got married in December. And uh, you guys have been dating for a really long time, so we were super excited when you guys um, when you guys did get married in December. Um, and how is it being a uh, a newlywed during this whole quarantine? And keep it p relatively PG. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, it was a uh, it was a long courtship. <laughs> <laughs> it it took me uh, six years. <laughs> to talk her into marrying me um, <laughs> we had our our first date it actually took me a long time to talk her into the first date <laughs> took me even longer to talk her into being my girlfriend uh than than to so uh, it's been it's been a sales pitch the whole way but i'm so glad uh that she said yes and uh it, it's just been the most fun and i'm you know I, like so lucky to have uh it's it's been uh the best part about making the move to the united states was uh meeting her so it yeah. uh it's definitely great and then uh quarantine's been good it's a good way to test out the marriage i feel like is um uh, i can be a lot to deal with all the time <laughs> a little high energy and a little fidgety um so without having 10 sets of cows to watch every day i uh i feel like i have a lot of energy so she's been an absolute saint to put up with that and uh i feel like if we can make it through this core team we're doing real good <laughs> so. yeah well good good i'm yeah. glad that between between the netflix and um pony training and uh whatnot i mean surely by the end of the day you're a little bit tired i don't know yeah yeah it's it's hard to uh it's hard to find enough stuff to take it out of you at home like uh like going to a month-long cutting wheel <laughs> so yes yes it is well, for sure well i appreciate you very much taking the time out of your day to talk to us it was really fun to chat with you and um, uh, I'm just uh, looking forward to the next time we all get to go out on the road again. I haven't gotten to show very much myself this year, and I was like ready. And then now we're now we're standing. <laughs> now standing we're, yeah. So. Now, 
now we're stopped. Yeah, it's it's the worst. Well, Lauren, it's it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, <laughs> oh I'm just I'm just gonna get back uh, to my stretches and the rest of my day. So uh, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. Bye. Bye.